Hi, Dr. Goldschneider here from the Pain Management Center at Cincinnati Children's Hospital. We're going to talk about chronic abdominal pain, which affects a whole lot of children and young adults and can be very, very severe. But one thing about it is that it can be very, very frustrating because so many people just end up hearing very simple names being given to what bothers them so very much. Things like functional abdominal pain or recurrent abdominal pain or IBS, which stands for irritable bowel syndrome. Nifty little names that don't really explain anything about what's going on. So what is going on? Well, I'm gonna show you two pictures today in the course of this presentation. Let's look at the first one. Now in this first one, you can see that there is an awful lot that goes on between the brain and the GI tract. All right, so with all the stomach and the intestines and bowels and all that, there can be inflammation and infections and all sorts of things that go on. There's all sorts of stuff that uh, has to function properly in the spinal cord and all the pathways that go up and down between the brain and the GI tract. And then all has to be well within the brain. So there are a number of things that can affect how pain is processed. And as you may remember from uh, seeing the video on anxiety, there are all sorts of things that go on at the level of the brain. So let's take a look at a factor that we see very, very frequently as sort of a trigger of the abdominal pain. Now this is inflammation. Now inflammation can be from something like an infection, such as a GI bug that where the whole family's been in the bathroom for a few days, and then like three months later, this young person still has pain as if they're still sick. It could be Crohn's disease or also colitis, where they've had a flare up for a while, and then even though the scopes are all looking good, there's still pain. It can be from the eosinophilic disorders, it could be pancreatitis, a whole bunch of things. What it, what they all have in common is that there are changes with inflammation in the interaction between the lining of the GI tract and the nerves that go to it. And the result of those changes is that certain chemicals, the messengers between cells, change. So now there's an increase in pain sensitivity in the nerves. And now those upgoing pathways that I showed you that drawing of become much stronger because that pain's constantly going along them. And like a muscle, the more it gets used, the stronger it gets. And the other, uh, more related to the other video on, on um, emotional and, and anxiety processing, that downgoing pathway sometimes gets a little weaker. So that imbalance causes a big, big problem. But it's that inflammation that very, very frequently gets things started. But there's even more to it than that. That's complicated enough. Let's take a look at the second graphic. Now, the first thing you're gonna say when you look at this is, whoa, this is an awful lot. Don't worry, you don't have to know everything about this. I'm not even gonna talk about all of it. The point is, is if you look over on the right, the word IBS shows up. That simple little term that lots of people throw around. Well, that's the end result. That's what you get when you walk into the doctor's office and they give you a bunch of tests and stuff and come up with a conclusion. But the big point here is look at all of the stuff to the left of it, those four columns worth of things that go on in varying amounts to combine together to end up with that very simple sounding label. So as you can see, those simple sounding names can be very, very frustrating because they don't really explain anything, but underneath them, there is a lot that goes on. And I hope you can appreciate that now. Fortunately, fortunately, with all of that, there are a number of things that can be done to rebalance those pathways and decrease the pain sensitivity, and decrease the pain processing and end up helping people feel a whole lot better with a lot less pain. So I hope that's helpful and I will see you next time. This is Dr. Ken Goldschneider signing off.